In this recording, we will discuss an introduction to the peripheral nervous system. Your peripheral nervous system, or your PNS, is responsible for linking your central nervous system, your CNS, to the body and to the external environment. Your peripheral nervous system detects sensory stimuli um, from your internal and external environments and deliver that sensory information to your CNS. We call that sensory input. Your central nervous system will then process that sensory input and it'll figure out what to do about all of that information and then it will transmit impulses back through the peripheral nervous system to your muscle cells and glands. We call this motor output. So as you can see in our picture, we have sensory information coming in through your peripheral nervous system. We've got some sensory neurons. Doo -doo -doo. We go into your central nervous system. We'll probably even go up into your giant brain. We'll come back down with that motor output information. We'll use a good old motor neuron and we'll send that information to your muscles or your glands. All right, so we can classify your PNS uh, two different ways. We've got two divisions. The sensory division, this is full of sensory neurons. You could hear them termed afferent neurons. These are the ones that are going to detect the sensory stimuli in your environment, both internally and externally. Okay. We're going to transmit that sensory information to your central nervous system again. All right, And we can do this in one of two ways. So we said we can do internal and external. Okay, So your somatic sensory division okay, detects both internal and external stimuli um, for things like your skin and your special senses. Okay, So eyes, ears, nose, mouth, all that good stuff. All right. Your visceral sensory division relays internal information from your internal organs okay, of your abdominal, pelvic, and your thoracic cavities. So this would be more like information regarding your blood pressure, your heart rate, things like that. And then we have your motor division. Okay, This is going to contain motor neurons. We might hear them termed efferent neurons. These neurons carry the motor output information Oh, from your central nervous system, we're sending it back out to the body to get some motor functions, some motor responses. And we can send motor signals to the same place that we got sensory information from. So we have a somatic motor division. These, uh, we find lower motor neurons here. Um, you might turn them somatic motor neurons, same thing. These innervate skeletal muscles. Okay, this is how we get voluntary. Um, motor movements. Okay, If you are trying to contract something like your cardiac muscle, your smooth muscle, things like that, we would need an involuntary response that would be coming from your visceral motor division. Now your visceral motor division is also known as your autonomic motor nervous system or just your autonomic nervous system. Okay? Um, you might want to put a star by that term, autonomic nervous system, the ANS. Pretty much from here on out, we are going to refer to your visceral motor division as just your autonomic nervous system. Okay, so you're definitely going to want to be familiar with that term. Now, these nerves, or uh, these neurons, innervate your cardiac muscles and your smooth muscles and your secretory glands. Okay, so this is our involuntary response. And we have two subdivisions of your autonomic nervous system. You've actually probably heard these terms before. This is your sympathetic and your parasympathetic systems, um, better known as your fight or flight and your rest and digest divisions. Okay? So your sympathetic nervous system is involved in um, homeostasis activities when you are physically working, um, when your emotions are very high, when you've got some sort of visceral response, aka when you are fighting or flighting. Okay, so when you are nervous or scared or physically doing work, exercise, things like that, that's going to be your sympathetic division. Your parasympathetic division, your rest and digest, this is going to, this might shock you, going to be involved in digesting and maintaining homeostasis at rest. Okay? I know, I know, I blew your minds. It's gonna be okay. 
it's going to be okay. So fight or flight, rest and digest, all of that is your autonomic nervous system, technically your visceral motor division. So all of this is motor output, okay? All right, this is kind of what some of it looks like. We can take somatic sensory information from your skin, your skeletal muscles, and then your senses, so your eyeball, for example. All of this, you can see the little arrows we're going into the central nervous system. We can also do this with the visceral sensory division, so perhaps your bladder is sending signals that we have a full bladder and we need to go potty. And so we just tell the brain, we're like, hey, time to go potty. And so your brain and your spinal cord, they process all that information. And they're like, all right, here's what we're going to do about it. And these motor outputs, okay, you can see the direction of the arrows. We're going back out to the body. And we can achieve um, skeletal muscle movement through your somatic motor division. Or we can um, activate your autonomic nervous system and move things, uh, or well, um, talk to things like your heart, your bladder, uh, other internal organs, things like that. All right, so we got your sympathetic and your parasympathetic there.